here today at CR Onsrud, where they make all their routers here at this facility. I'm gonna be talking with their sales manager, Ken Stissel, about their machines, and they're also a Mastercam reseller, so we'll hear about how they use the software. Hey, Ken. How's it going, Jesse? Good oh. to be here. Immediately coming in, can't help but notice the Lady Liberty sitting on the table there. That's right, very fun project yeah. that we worked on together. It was a challenge, right? That was a tough part. Absolutely. This was foam, right? Yes. We had a lot of dust coming off of that, a lot of chips coming off of that. This machine really performed well in that regard. We chose our Cube Series. This is a very popular machine for us now. We have customers cut a variety of materials, wood, plastics, composites. We developed these machines to be a full enclosure to capture that dust. We took one of our traditional moving gantry machines. We stretched it up, got rid of the columns. The frame actually became the columns. Put walls around it. We've got drawers underneath and you can hook up dust collection in the back of the machine and it creates like a downdraft effect and pulls the dust out. This machine here is five by 12, 40 inches of Z. Got a 20,000 RPM spindle on there so we can do really fast, high RPM cutting. There's a lot going on here. I noticed when I pulled in, there's two separate buildings with a big gantry crane coming between them. We build everything here, all the frames and everything. So the lower building is our fabrication facility where we do all the cutting with plasmas. We weld them together. Then we bring them up here to do stress relieving machining painting and assembly. You're not assembled in America, you are made we here. Are made in You're America. not importing castings or something and building a machine around it. You are yeah. building it here. Everything's done here. So you talked about machining components. Obviously there's a lot of machine components in a machine like this. You guys are utilizing Mastercam on your floor as well. We are, we have several machines in our machine shop, horizontals, verticals, bridge mills. We even have our own routers making our own parts. And yes, we use Mastercam in our machine shop. And you guys actually sell and support Mastercam for we your do. customers as well. We do. And we sell machines into a variety of industries, making parts from kitchen cabinets all the way up to hypersonic missiles. They need some sort of software that can handle their application and Mastercam is a great software package that we can provide to the customer. Having that machine simulation and being able to simulate that on the screen in Mastercam is critical to getting a complex component like this out the door. It is, especially with the new tating head, it's continuous CNA, so we right. don't have to do the unwinds. Right. And Mastercam was able to yeah. handle that. And being able to utilize, you know, where that column is and being able to visualize where that column is as you're working around a part. I know that was critical around the torch yes, on this part. Definitely. It was fun to watch machining yeah. thinking it was gonna climb, but it, it did not. Yeah. Got close but did not. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you having yeah, me in awesome. here today. Thanks, Jesse. It was great to see everything and we look forward to collaborating further. Yes, thank you. So this is it, huh? Yeah, so this is the CR Onsrud 66 inch Statue of Liberty. What was the most difficult part? I know you had at one point some really long tool lengths. We had a really long overhang to overcome where the torch is. So in here we had a tool that was over 15 or 16 inches long in order to reach. You had that column too, right? The big Z-axis column with yeah. the C-axis down on it. Yeah, the... so this is a big gantry five axis router. The column was basically within a quarter of an inch of the tip of this torch. It's a really impressive project. I'm assuming you use mostly unified on this. I created a bunch of cone shaped surfaces and drove the rough toolpath and uh, tried to retract away from the actual model itself and it worked really well. Same strategy up here on the torch? Same strategy, just scaled down so a bunch of smaller cone-shaped surfaces that kind of worked up the arm. And this was a big challenge too, right? Because this whole thing is really skinny and unsupported. We had to finish this and rough it in progress. That's what I was just going to gonna say. You must have had to really kind of structure. Did you have any that broke on you or you were able to figure that out with simulation, how it was all gonna go. From the first piece, we actually had good parts because of machine simulation. We learned a couple things, especially with finishing some small details up here, to really be aggressive about leaving material down here, but it was really fully successful, no collisions or anything bad. Very impressive. Was that a ball end mill, or were you using a bowl? It was a quarter inch ball, got into some of the smaller details, and we had a three quarter inch flat end mill that did all the roughing. So being down at Onsrud a few weeks ago and getting to see that machine, it's really cool to see this all come together and you know, see that part. That was the, the next machine they have coming off the line. Yeah. Uh, and to see their manufacturing process, it's, impressive place. It's really cool seeing how those machines come together all inside of the CR Onsrud factory. Well, thanks for walking me through this, yeah, it's really cool. Well, I want to thank CR Onsrud for sending us this finished part as well. It's cool we get to have this in our lobby now.